So here's our little job for today. I've got two of these brand new cast iron impellers that I got to trim. They come a little bit large on the OD and a little bit on the ceiling rings as well. I've got approximately 80 thousandths to come off the OD right here. I haven't mic'd the seal rings yet to find out, but they're gonna have to be trimmed a little bit. And what I've done is I'm using an old shaft. This is a, this is an old pump shaft, but it was good on one end. It just had a bad bearing fit on it. And I cut it off and using that as the mandrel here to save a little time on the setup. I've still got to tighten up the nut. I don't have it fully tight yet, but put a center on one end. And I've got it running zero right here. All right, so here, here's our indicator set up on the OD, the impeller. And I, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not. We'll try. So, looks like it's within two thousandths on the OD of the impeller. But after we turn these, I'll get both of them turned. We're gonna send it over to the, to the motor shop and they're gonna make sure that they're balanced. You can see where the factory balance is right here. They use, a, they use an end mill and a milling machine do their balance in there. So I'll show you some of the cutting that we do and uh, we'll get these suckers done. This is the tool that I'm going to be using right here. This is a WNMG 400 size insert. And this particular insert is what I'm really talking about. This one is a, it's a flat insert. And it's great for cast iron and bronze and that kind of stuff. You know, short chipping material. So we're going to give that one a try for this impeller. Use the big Mitch toy today. All right, so five thirty nine. See, somebody wrote one on there. Thing that I noticed is that I've got the compound in too far right here so I'm gonna to have to back this up I'm gonna go ahead and back it out like that and I'm gonna to have to move this tool forward so that we don't crash into the impeller right here that should work pretty good right there
took about half of it right there. I just hold the bottom of the, the mic in place and kind of center it with my fingers on the on the edge of the impeller there. Exactly half inch there. Uh, it's 14, I'm sorry, 16. 16.5. Alright, so that leaves us, let's see, 40 minus 3, so that'd be 37,000 to come off this. said we got to turn the seal rings as well I believe let me see I'm at 10.366 on the uh, on the sample over there so we're definitely bigger on this one too yeah I'm at 406 right here so we got 40 thousand to come off of it to get up in there we're gonna use this uh, what is that da13 holder it's got an extended reach on it that's the one i usually use for this this tool right here just because everything's kind of jammed up together right here and the compound is trying to hit the tailstock by you know when i feed it all the way in so instead of new, moving the tool post we're just going to use this tool holder and that gives us plenty of room right there I think that'll work. Most of my tool holders here are set for a one inch shank. So what I do just to quickly set it is I measure this distance right here, which is usually 9 16 this gap here. So when I gotta move one around, that's what I do. And that looks about right right there. About 389 there. So we're going to take it down to 366. All right, we hit our size right on the money on this side too. Now we're going to use our IL gopher tool and put us a, a slight chamfer on that edge just to kind of break it. Just like that. 
So this other side over here. As much as I didn't want to, I believe I'm going to have to just flip the impeller around to be able to turn it because any combination that I'm trying to come up with, I'm not reaching the other side, this uh, seal ring over here. I've been trying to swing the compound a little bit, but I just can't get out here. And even with a combination of a boring bar holder, anything like that, I'm not going to be able to get in there and, and cut that without running into the bottom of the impeller down here on your cross slide. Remember what we said about saving our backs for the weekend, right? Put just enough tension on that on that strap just to kind of carry the weight. I didn't really even pick up on it. I don't tighten this up until I actually have the center up in here to support the shaft. using our 11 to 12 on this side here. Uh, right about 997. We got we got to finish at 962, so that's about 25,000 to come off this one. All right, so we wanted 962. We're at 80, 75, 80, 81, 82, 83. So we got 21 thousandths. Come on. Let's see if we hit our mark. Use the friction thimble this time, see what I come up with. Looks like 962, that's what I wanted. All right, so we just need to uh, chamfer this edge like I did the other side. I've already filed this right here, but we'll chamfer that and got one more to do.
All right, rinse and repeat. All right, there we go. We got both of them finished up and I was able to hit all of the sizes like I should have. So they're finished up and they're gonna head over to the balancing shop now.